crush to burn. Hey everyone. So tonight I wanted to discuss one of the digital hardcore limited. See, that's what happens when you think things are securely against a wall. I'm fucking telling you, is that Leatherface? Because he's been getting on my nerves for like 20 years. Oh, yeah, of course it was. The First off, the, the chainsaw won't uh, fit in the hands. It won't fit in his hands at all, so I... Like, see that there? I've kind of got it, you know, where it is. But oh no, like you just barely, you just barely touch that and it just kind of, it falls out. See? It falls out at the worst possible times. Now I will say it is beneficial because it helps balance. Oh fuck, I hate this toy. And now I've got the head and the arm and the hammer and the bucket that comes with them. No doubt all over behind me somewhere. And I can feel the fucking movie poster that came with it sticking down my back and it's kind of digging in and it's really uncomfortable. Fuck you, Leatherface. Fuck you. There it is. Yeah, that. The arm is gone. The arm's gone. The little fucking seat. There's the head, there's the hammer, there's the bucket, and the arm is gone. So I'm back. Huh? I just leaned back again. Oh fuck, I shouldn't do that. Gotta sit up straight. Okay, so I'm back. And yeah, I am here to discuss one of the DHR limited releases, and this is the Bleeding in Circles from Heartworm. I have it back here, there it is. This is, like I said, it's one of the limited releases. I'm not really sure what that meant. There were a number of these and I've managed to find a few of them over the years. I think I only have four or five of them. And this, at this point, by the time um, I had been buying these as they came out, I was sort of, I thought I knew what I was getting when I bought each release from DHR, but this completely threw a curve in because this is more, this would fit in more with what Warp Records was doing at the time. This reminded me more of, this was closer to say like Aphex Twin or Autechre than any of the noisier, heavier, more punk rock inspired shit that DHR was doing at the time. This came out, I think, back in around 2001, 2000 and... Yeah, this was released back in 2001. And this was really progressive. I didn't see this coming. Like I said, this was so melodic and it was really, really fun and it was really catchy. Whereas everything up until this point that DHR had released, it was all fun and catchy as well, but it was more on like a bludgeoning, more like noisy, sort of gonna beat the shit out of you kind of way. And this, like I said, this would have fit in with everything Warp Records was doing at the time. And it kind of made me wish the DHR had released more albums like this because quite frankly, they just didn't. Most of their stuff is just, just drenched in static and like distorted break beats. And I love that and I'm not knocking it in any way. But when surprises like this pop up, it really makes me wish that they had done more things like that because maybe they would have been a little more accessible to more people and maybe they would have made a little more money so they would have been able to release even more records than they did. Not saying they didn't release enough records because they most certainly did, but nonetheless, having a fucking injection of cash from catchier albums like this, had it been marketed correctly, it would have uh, guaranteed that the label stayed stronger for even longer. But for the most part, albums like this are sort of few and far between on DHR. And that is what kind of sort of gives this its own sort of unique footprint and everything, don't get me wrong. And had the label started looking for more and more albums that sounded like this, I'm sure inevitably things would have become washed out and everything would have ended up sounding the same. So surprises like this are great, but this sort of in the same sense, even though they sound nothing alike, this reminds me of sort of the Motormark release, the chrome tape from them. I didn't see that coming any more than I saw this coming and they were both really surprising and they were both really fun sounding and it was really fresh and it brought something new to the table because at that point DHR had sort of cemented their reputation for putting out really, really hardcore sounding digital punk rock releases that were more in line with like the Atari Teenage Riot or Bomb 20 and everything Alec Empire had done like the Destroyer, Intelligence and Sacrifice, things like that. And then this came out in 2001 and it was really surprising because like I said, it would fit more with what like Warp Records or Planet Mew were doing at the time. And it's a shame that there weren't more of them, but maybe that's kind of the point. Maybe these things are supposed to be few and far between on a label like DHR. Who knows?
But look, I'm gonna go. So thank you so much for sitting with me while I discuss Bleeding in Circles from Heartworm, which was released back on DHR in 2001. If you like this review, don't forget to do something nice for somebody. And I fucking hate my Leatherface toy. It's an annoying motherfucking piece of shit that's always falling and it's heavy too. Sometimes it's fallen from a ways up and it's cracked me on the head and it hurts. So why did I just say that? It doesn't matter. Have a good night. Thank you so much. I just wanted to say thank you for making it through the entire video. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to remind everyone one more time, even though I've probably already done this in the video that you just watched, to please click the like button as well as the subscribe button because it helps this channel grow. And thank you for hitting like and subscribe. And we will see you guys really soon.